All right, so here is another example of a polynomial function. Now, please note that this is a polynomial of degree four. Since it's of degree four, that means we can have at most four solutions, okay? Well, I mean, we're gonna have four zeros, that, that's a guarantee. Now, sometimes the zeros uh, occur more than once. So you might have that x equals three shows up once and it shows up a second time, and that's called a multiplicity. And we're gonna see that at later on here in this particular section. But we know we're gonna have four zeros. And here's the problem that we run into. We don't have techniques available to us right now to handle something that's of degree four. But notice what I'm doing here. I'm giving you two factors. And if we divide those guys out one at a time, this is what's gonna happen. You have a degree of four. If you use x plus three, that now leaves you with something that's degree three. And if you use the x minus two, you would then have a degree of two. And anytime we can get down to a degree of two, we're in good shape. Because if we can get down to a degree of two, that means it's quadratic. And we spent an entire you know, week earlier this semester um, solving quadratic equations. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go from a degree of four, use one factor, use another factor, and you're gonna be left with something that is quadratic. So here's what we have to do though. We can only use these uh, one at a time. You can't go too crazy because then we're gonna have we're gonna have issues. Alright. So I need to find all the zeros and all the intercepts. And you know, let's do the synthetic division first and we're gonna come back to that part. Alright. So just to make it look a little neat. So put our headings here just like we've been doing. So my k is going to go out here. This goes all the way up to x to the fourth, so we'll count it down. Four, three, two, one, and then the constant. Remember, here at the very end, we're supposed to have a remainder of zero, or else we've done something wrong. So my k value, and you know what? Uh, we got to pick one of these guys. I say, since this is the first one listed, let's use him, which means he has a k value of negative three, so the opposite of what we see. Now we take these coefficients and we populate them here in the synthetic division problem. So one x to the fourth, seven x to the third, 13 x squared, this is a negative 23 x, negative 78. So, after we do one pass through here with synthetic division, it's going to go from degree four to x to the third. And we've seen this. This is, this is not going to be new to us. So bring down the one and do what we've been doing. Multiply times the k value of negative three. So we get negative three. Combine to get four. Multiply times k to get negative 12. Add to get one couple more times here so we get negative 3 that gives me negative 26 and when you do negative times negative you get a positive and 3 times 26 is 78 which is really good news for us because now we get a remainder of 0 which again is what we're supposed to have so just so that we're all on the same page we've gone from x to the fourth to now this is your coefficient for x to the third for x squared, for x, and your constant. So we're almost there. We're almost to the point where we have something that's quadratic. So this is where we do synthetic division a second time, but we do it on this reduced form. Don't go back to the beginning guy. Start here, and let's do synthetic division. Notice that my synthetic division box is going to stop a little bit sooner because I have one less column. Okay, My remainder is going to be down here, and we know that that remainder is supposed to be zero or else I've done something wrong. All right, my k value is going to be the opposite of this guy, so it's going to be two. And now we do synthetic division. Bring down the one, and Let's do this. Uh, one times two is two. Combine these guys, we get six. Two times six 
is 12. 1 and 12 gives me 13. Multiply times 2. And we get 26 and we see, we see we're on the right path. Negative 26 and positive 26 will give me a remainder of 0. So in all of this, we go from x to the fourth. After one round of division, we have x to the third. After a second round, we lose another degree, and now it's x squared. That's going to be your x, and this is going to be your constant. If I were somehow to do synthetic division another time, we're going to go from x squared down to x to the first, right? So the, the goal here is to make this polynomial smaller and smaller so it's easier to handle. So we go from degree 4, we used x plus 3, so now it's degree 3. Then we use the factor x minus 2, and now it's degree 2. Quadratic, happy home, right? So now let's take, let's take this guy and let's finish this out. So we're still trying to find our zeros, so we're going to rewrite this as x squared plus 6x plus 13 equals 0, and now we're going to solve this. But we're going to put on our quadratic equation hats. So let's, th let's think about this. The first thing we try to do is square root property. But the square root property doesn't really apply here. The next thing we try to do is factoring. As much as you want to, you can't find factors of 13 that add to 6. After that is completing the square. And the things we're looking for so that completing the square is nice is you want this lead coefficient to be 1, which we have, and you want this middle coefficient to be even. We've got that too. So let's complete the square. So remember, to complete the square, we're going to move the constant to the other side. So there's that negative 13. And now we've got to figure out what goes in the blank so that we can complete the square. I'm trying to rewrite this to be a binomial square. So here's the trick, remember? Half of 6 is 3. So we divide by 2. And then we square this guy to figure out what goes here in the gap. So that's 3 squared, which is 9. So we added 9 on this side, but to maintain balance, we have to add 9 on the right side as well. We added 9 on the left so that we could get a perfect square trinomial so that it could factor as that little binomial square. On the right side, when we keep the balance there, combine these guys, and we get negative 4. And now, we use the square root property to finish this. So let's take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. All right, so we have x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. And the negative here gives us i finish getting x by itself, so x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2i. So yes, there's a lot going on here in this problem, but piece by piece it's really not that bad. If we go back to what the instructions say, the instructions say find all zeros. Alright, so let's, let's do that. Um, I'm just going to do this over here to the side for you. So let's list our zeros. Our zeros were, first of all, negative 3 and positive 2. I mean, those guys were given to us from the very beginning. And then we found the remaining zeros, which were negative 3 plus or minus 2i. So negative 3 plus or minus 2i. So we were expecting four zeros because the polynomial was degree four. There's one, two, the plus or minus gives us two more for a total of four. Finding all the intercepts. All right, so let's look at the x-intercepts. Remember for the x-intercepts, we only get an x-intercept from a zero that's a real number. That means these guys right here do not give us x-intercepts, just these two. So that would be the ordered pairs, negative three, zero, and the order pair to 0. Again, those guys don't give us anything. Now, what a lot of students forget about is that when I say find all intercepts, I also mean find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, something. 
and let's scan back up to the top of the page and we see what happens when I plug in zero to everything. When I plug in zero to all of these x's, the only thing that's going to be left is my constant. So for my y-intercept, it's going to be zero comma negative 78. So we found all the zeros and all the intercepts. So uh, let's stop this one and let's do a brand new problem here on the next video.